Hey guys, it's Nottle here from Lockpickers United, and today, in this video, we will be going over how to make pins that will go into your challenge locks. Now, the pins we're going to be making today range from beginner difficulty to make to more advanced. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into this video. So let's go over the tools we're going to be using today to make our challenge lock pins. Uh, first off is a hacksaw blade. Now. The hacksaw blade has small teeth in it. Now we're going to use those to cut a lot of material off of the pins when we're making them. You can get these at any home home hardware store, any uh, basically large tool store. They're fairly cheap, um, but definitely a must for making challenge locks. For the pins at least. The second item that we're going to be using is a steak knife. Now, the reason we're using the steak knife is, as you can see, there's a bunch of serrations there on the blade, and that's going to be really good for making serrated pins and deep cuts within the brass pins. Grab these at thrift stores, uh, use liquidation stores. They're fairly cheap when you buy them in a bundle, and they will last quite a while. I always keep two in my collection for when I'm making challenge locks, just in case one dulls out. The next item we're going to be using is a file. The file is going to be used for removing a lot of bulk material from the pin when making T-pins and so forth. Definitely nice to have one of these. They're pretty cheap. You can find them on Amazon or uh, eBay. And sandpaper. So this is 900 grit sandpaper. This is great for after you've carved the pins using these guys here. This is great for knocking down the burrs and kind of uh, making the pins not as sharp. I highly recommend this. You grab yourself a couple sheets of it from the hardware store. Very cheap last you for a long long time. I've been using the same little piece here for probably four or five challenge locks and there's still lots of life left in it. Now this next one is optional. I recently just got it myself. It is a very fine hobbyist knife basically. So you can see this has 54 I believe teeth per inch. So this is going to cut a lot more finer serrations than these knives here. Now this again is a luxury. You don't need this. Um, this is something I recently just bought and it makes a huge difference but this is something you don't really need to have for making it if you're trying to do it on a budget. And finally is a good set of small, very small files. So I bought this set here for about 20 bucks. There's different shapes and profiles here. These are great for making pins especially when you start doing more intricate ones. You get a lot more control than this larger file here. And that is going to be the, basically all of the tools that we're going to be using. Um, the only tool that I haven't discussed is the rotary tool, so such as a Dremel. Um, definitely something you're going to need to have to make pins. I've seen people make pins in drills. Um, it's a little bit harder with drills. You get a lot faster speed with a Dremel tool. And that's what I use to make mine. And you get a way better result in the end. But that's basically it for tools that you're going to need to make your challenge locks. So now let's go over each type of pin from the most easiest to make to the more advanced pins to make. So starting off first we have serrated. Serrated are a great beginner pin to make. As you can see there's very deep serrations cut into the pin and what this is going to do is when it's in the core it's going to click every time you push it past one of those serrations into the Bible. Now that serration, that sound of click, will give a slight amount of movement in the core, but will also produce an audible noise, and this can be mistaken for setting a pin, leaving this overset. This pin's great for in the core as well as up in the Bible. As you can see, you've got it laid out there. Next pin we're going to be making today is a torpedo pin. Uh, the name comes from it looking kind of like a torpedo. This is only really used in the core as a key pin. Uh, at least for me. So what the whole point of this pin is, is pretend my tweezers are now the core. That's sitting flush. Now if I am picking this and I accidentally bump this, it almost wants to scoot right up and overset itself. And it's very hard to drop back down. So this is going to be overset a lot in challenge locks. Uh, the next style of pin is a T pin. Now it gets its name because it almost looks like a T. So what this is going to do is when you push it up, it's going to set itself. See how it comes loose? It'll do the same thing in the core. And this will give ro rotation and kind of some movement on the core, thinking that making someone think they've set a pin, when in reality it's still not fully set. Very easy to make this guy here. Uh, the next pin is going to be a driver pin, so on the top. This is a mushroom pin. 
Now the mushroom pin, as you can see here, has a very sharp bottom on it, and it's almost like a spool. It acts like a spool. So this goes in, and it's going to give lots of rotation and lots of counter rotation. This might be responsible for dropping pins. Say you've set three or four pins, you click this guy up once, it's going to fall into a false set. You go to set this guy, and what he's going to do is he's going to drop a lot of pins back down. Very, very annoying. Uh, mushroom pins are used in medical locks, which is a high security lock. Definitely pain in the butt. Uh, the next most common pin, and the pin we'll be making, is a spool pin. Now, of course, spools give lots of counter rotation. This is great. You have a lock, a couple of these in there. It's really going to give a lot of rotation on the core. Um, once you've learned how to set these, though, they're pretty easy, but having a couple spools in it can throw someone off when they're making their challenge lock. Or when they're picking it, my bad. Now, this next one's kind of interesting. So it's almost like a torpedo pin and a spool mashed together. So as you can see, it's a spool, but it's got a very big diameter circle in the middle. Now, what this does here is it's going to basically set itself or give two false sets one here on the top and one in the bottom here very very hard to pick with uh, it can be a real pain in the butt especially if you don't know what's there and the final and last pin we'll be going over today is pin and pin now this may just look like a normal pin but let me grab another set of tweezers here the top one fully comes off the bottom one so it's a t-pin basically with a another pin that slides on top of it. This is great. This is a very hard pin to pick. Um, this should only really be used in as a key pin, not a driver pin. So when you push this up, that top part's gonna catch in the core. That's gonna give some really weird movement. Um, very, very hard to pick, especially if you don't know what's in the lock. Now the T-pin is the hardest pin to make here, but we'll be showing how to do it today. So the first pin we're going to be making is a serrated pin. Um, to make this pin, we're going to be taking our barbecue knife, as seen here. And we're going to turn the Dremel on to a medium speed. And basically, we're just going to press in and let the knife do most of the work. Um, that's basically it for the serrated pin. Take the sandpaper after. Uh, just give it a quick hit with that. And as you can see here, I'm actually polishing my pins just makes them look better it has no it doesn't affect the functionality of the pins at all this is just preference for me uh, as I do like the look of the polished pins in the locks the next pin we're gonna be making is a torpedo pin this one's a little bit more difficult than the serrated but it really is not that hard to make you're just gonna take a small file and you're gonna kind of taper the pin so you want it to be fat at one end almost untouched and on the other end you want to take a bit of material off again I'm hitting it with sandpaper just to make it a little smoother and I am polishing it again, just because I do like to have a bit of a shine on my pins, especially when people take apart my challenge locks. I think it adds a, another level of professionalism to the pins. So the next pin we're gonna be making is a spool pin. Uh, important things to note with the spool pin is not to make it too thin. Uh, so people put a lot of tension on these usually and you don't want this to snap, it's only brass. So first we're gonna take our hacksaw blade and take off the majority of the material. After that's done, we're going to grab a small file and we're just going to grind it down to its final size. Again, not too thin, so we don't want it to break. Uh, hit it with the sandpaper again, just to get rid of all the harsh, sharp edges. And then after that, hit it with the polish. Uh, you can see here my rag actually got stuck in the Dremel. It happens all the time. Uh, just got to be careful with it. But other than that, that's all it is to a spool pin. The next pin we're going to be making is a T-pin. Uh, simply to make the T-pin, put half of the pin into the chuck of the Dremel and just file down about half of the diameter of the pin. Uh, I sand it down, hit it with some polish, and that's it for this guy. Next pin we'll be making is a mushroom pin. To make this guy, we're going to load the pin in the chuck. We're going to use the serrated knife to kind of make a starting point. Um, I kind of mark my depth though with this one then I'm going to take a small file and angle it towards or sorry away from the chuck I'm going to take the knife after then and just cut off the end of it uh, I'm going to cut it flush and then I'm going to use some sandpaper to get rid of any edges and then take some polish and polish up the end of the pin and here you guys can see the finished product of this guy 
One of the more advanced pins we'll be making today is a reverse hourglass pin. That's a spool basically with a bulge in the middle. So we're going to take our serrated knife and we're going to mark the starting points of where I'm going to file. I'm going to file towards the middle here as you can see. Uh, this pin gives a lot of feedback when picking because it acts like a spool, but it does tend to click when it's set around that middle part. I'm going to polish this guy again, just like I usually do. And then I'm going to take this guy out, flip him around, and I'm going to file it down uh, instead of cutting it or leaving that top so it's kind of more cleaned up. Okay, so the last pin we'll be making in the hardest is a pin and pin. And just like the name implies, it's going to be a, an outer pin with a T-pin on the middle. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to take my knife and I'm going to make some serrations. You'll notice here that the third serration closest to the chuck is actually the deepest. And you'll see that reason in a minute. So the idea behind this pin is that the outer shell or outer pin is able to slide up and down while the inner pin can stay stationary. Now this causes a lot of feedback. It's very weird. Uh, so to make this now, I'm going to take a small drill bit, some pliers, and I'm going to keep pushing on in. And once I push to that third cut there, you can see it breaks right off. And that's the whole reason for that third cut being the deepest. And it always comes on the drill bit too, so it never goes flying off, which is always nice. Now, the rest of this pin is now garbage to me. Um, you can see I kind of struggled to get it out, but this, this pin essentially now is garbage. I only really needed it for that top part that I cut off and that's on the drill bit. So this pin requires two pins just to make one. So now you're going to see that I'm going to be loading up the second pin. Now this pin is going to be the T-pin. I should have flipped it around actually and had the, uh, the pointed side in the chuck because this pin is only really good when it's used as a key pin, not a driver. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to measure how the height of my pin here so I know where to kind of sand it down to. You want these basically to be flush once they're done. So I get it to where I want it. And then I'm just going to take this large file and I'm going to file it down. I'm going to stop too. It's always good to check the fit here. If you file down too much material, it's not snug. You kind of want it to be loose, but not too loose. You can see again, um, almost there though. So I'm going to go to a smaller file that takes off less material. And I'm just going to refine that T-pin. And as you can see, I believe this time it fits perfectly. It's pretty flush on the top, moves in and out of it pretty easily. So I can see I'm pretty happy with this pin and that's basically all it is for the pin and pin. Thank you for watching. Um, like if you liked the video, maybe if you found it helpful, make sure you guys just subscribe to Lockpickers United. You'll never miss out on great content like this. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day.